This is Mayor Pro Tem Todd Gattel, and welcome to Discover Rowlett. <laughs> We begin our adventure right here at the newly named Kenwood Heights Park behind the Walmart and Kenwood Drive. Today, with the help of Kaboom, Forrester's Insurance, and many other sponsors, as well as hundreds of volunteers, we begin building a playground right outside the entrance of this community. I'm here in front of our park, and there's been a lot of prep work, as you see, that's already been done, and we'll be getting started very shortly. In back of me, to my right, is actually the, the area that we're going to be doing the actual playground in. This has been mapped out. Many weeks of work and effort have gone into this, and and soon, before you know it, we'll begin construction. Anne from Kaboom is currently giving instructions, and construction will begin in just a few minutes. Currently, the groups are being formed. Each of them have been assigned a specific project or task, and they'll be getting started very shortly. To my right, you'll see a staging area where all of the play equipment has been set up. It's hard to believe that all these individual pieces will soon come together and become a playground. The teams are currently in their groups, and they're being given last-minute instructions. I'm here with Wayne Baxter, chair of our Parks Department and also on the Partners Foundation. Wayne, welcome. So tell Thank me you, about Todd. the project. Well, as you can see, there's, there's a lot going on today. We appreciate the many volunteers that have come out to help us build this playground. We'd like to thank uh, the Foresters Group, uh, Kaboom uh, from Washington, D.C., and the local businesses that have uh, donated different services, food, uh, tools, everything that, that requ is required to build a playground like this. And we appreciate everybody's help from the city of Rowlett. Kaboom is a national nonprofit organization, and we just believe that play is a right, and we want to see a safe place to play within walking distance of every child. So this particular space is exciting because there was no playground here, so we had a blank slate to work with. Now we're going to do the count and see how many people we have here, but we just have amazing people who showed, gave up their Saturdays today that came out and helped, and uh, can't wait to see this built by 2.30. Ernest, how are you? You're right. Good. How are you doing? Good, good. How good. So what are you guys doing here? Looks like picnic tables? We're doing picnic tables. We are. Okay. Absolutely. How many so picnic we, tables you guys We've building? got four picnic tables we're gonna okay. we're gonna build today. And uh, we're getting them all lined up right now and then we're gonna measure twice and cut once. At least I, that's the uh, that's that, the theory. That's the goal, isn't it? <laughs> so what does the park mean to you? Uh, just a lot of friends and people and be able to have all the kids come out and play and have as in community have fun. One of the things I really like is the fact that when you see events like this that take place, you see all the people that actually turn out, it really gives you a good feeling about the community and really what it stands for. That's truly really why we're the 24th best place to live in the U.S. I just want to volunteer just to help out and uh, figured I could do a little bit for the community. And I live in the neighborhood, so I figured why not. And um, I think it's just helping to improve the overall quality of the neighborhood. Uh, it means a place for the kids to come and play and enjoy themselves and hang out and parents can bring their children and have a good time on a wonderful day like this. A couple of weeks ago, uh, there was nothing but dump trucks here, you know, uh, uh, on construction of the streets. And this is a marvelous uh, transformation of, of, of the neighborhood. I'm here with Jermel Stevenson, Director of Parks and Recreation. Jermel, tell us what this park means to the city. Oh, this is a huge, this is an amazing pro project here. Um, this is, I think the park is probably six years old now, uh, so it's still an infant. But it hasn't been given a birth. Today we give, get to give it a birth. One day, eight hour, well, probably eight, ten hours, you're going to see a playground here. Uh, it, it's just amazing. I love working with Kaboom. Part of the sense of community is the ability to be able to bring the families out together. And Kaboom has done a great job in that. And they actually have a kid's play area that's been designed to keep the kids busy while the parents help to build the park. I'm here with Brian Funderburg, our, our assistant city manager. Brian, tell us what this park means to you. You know, this is a great community effort. I cannot believe that we have so many people showing up today. This park wouldn't be here without our volunteers and with the community and those that contributed dollars and those that are going to contribute their time today. Without this park, you know, we would have all this infrastructure. This way the kids get something out of it too. Well, and it certainly makes it more of a family neighborhood as well. It really says to realtors and people moving in the area that this is a family community. I agree, absolutely. Exciting times. Foresters is a company that cares about families and cares about communities, and because of that, 
We sponsor playground builds like this. This is the 20th one in, in the year 2010. We've been doing this for several years. Our, as a company, we are genuinely committed to families and keeping families together and helping communities. And this is one of the ways that we do it. I'm here with Councilwoman Donna Davis. Donna, tell us about the project. Like, what are you guys doing? We're building the seesaws for the playground today. Okay, and uh, how many seesaws are there we? I think there's going to be two on this one. On two on this one. The neighborhood looks so much nicer after the revitalization and this just gives a, a place for the children of the neighborhood to come and play and it's in walking distance and it's just a sense of community I think. Well I think it's wonderful because we're going to get more children out active and help prevent child obesity. That's, the, that's the, really the bottom line. We need to get our children active and so they're out and they have things to do and preventing child obesity and, and having lots of exercise and lots of opportunities for our children to, to play and, and that's the bottom line. It has been a great day. As you can see behind me, construction is almost complete and they are ready to do the ribbon cutting in just a few minutes. As the workers have worked very diligently, we've had many piles of mulch have disappeared and it looks great. It's going to be great when this thing is finally open, just about a few minutes away. We're here with Mayor John Harper with Rowlett City Council. John, so what do you think about this day? Wow, is this not a special day? From what I understand, we've had over 250 volunteers come out on a beautiful Saturday, gave up their time, their energy, their talent, and their sweat equity to build a beautiful park right here outside of Kenwood Heights. Very, very special. Well, it certainly has been a great day. Doug, what are your thoughts about today? This is great. Um, I wish I could have been here for more of the more of the build, but the uh, outcome looks fantastic. I'm real happy with it. Any comments, Patrick? Well, most definitely. I think, uh, you know, we should be very proud of this project. The whole city turned out to help, and I think, I think they're just wonderful. I think it's also a wonderful way to, just to get the people together, a sense of holiday. So that's kind of what I think about it. I think that's great. Now Donna, you, Patrick, and I have been here for the majority of the day. We were here, we were very early risers this morning, and you have done a yeoman's effort today. So well, what are your thoughts? You know, I think the build has been so much fun. It's been wonderful. There's been so many great volunteers out here working hard today, and I think the results speak for themselves. It's just a wonderful playground for this, this community. Well, today was a great day. The park is finished. We need to wait 72 hours before you can use it, but it is ready to go. It is absolutely beautiful. Well, I'm on my way home to get changed, and I'm going to be off to the tree lighting. Well, our journey continues, and we're back on Main Street for the 2010 Holiday Festival and Tree Lighting. It is very, very exciting time to be here. There's a lot going on. I'm, I'm behind stage right now. We're getting ready to start in just a few minutes. As you can see, the stage is prepped and ready to go. And to my left, we have the choirs that are going to be singing. We have a wonderful lineup this evening. We have Rowlett Elementary School Choir, we have the Coyle Middle School Choir, the Stevens Elementary School Choir, and then Santa arrives. That's right, Santa's going to be here this evening. We have photos with Santa as well, and we'll be taking it down there a little bit later. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bell swing and jingle bells ring. Despite the cold, hundreds of families turned out to hear the children sing. And boy, did they sing. They performed better than ever. Three of the schools and hundreds of children performed, putting on a wonderful Christmas concert. Each of the members of council also participated as well. We had Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Patrick Jackson, Councilwoman Donna Davis, and Councilman Doug Phillips participated with introductions and welcomed each of the choirs. In addition to a great performance by the choirs, Main Street was decorated brighter than ever. The lights glistening, and people hustling and bustling to get to the many different activities that were going on at the same time. And a special thanks to Home Depot for all their help on their build projects. 
And let's not forget Sirt as well, because they also help serve up the hot chocolate that kept the night even warmer. And a special thanks to street vendors. They provided a lot of fun for the evening as well. And let's not forget the Girl Scouts. Boy, what a great help they were. They sponsored a very large activity area and lots of things to do. And it was too cold outside, you could certainly warm up in the library. Hundreds gathered where they did different build projects. And our gingerbread houses, well, they just sold out. It was one of the most popular events ever. And let's not forget Santa. He finished off the evening as he rode in the fire truck down Main Street to the farmer's market. Santa had thousands in attendance lining the streets with hundreds lining up for pictures and photo opportunities. Boy, what a great evening it was. Everybody asking for their special wish. was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring not even a mouse the stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there and let's not forget Mayor John Harper because he finished off the evening with a bang he read that was the night before Christmas which has become an annual event for the city of Rowlett Three, two, one. Thank you all very much for your help. Rocking around the Christmas tree, let the Christmas spirit ring. Well, as you see, the holiday freight festival is still going on, and the Christmas tree lighting went off without a hitch. It's been a great day in the city of Rowlett. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And thanks for watching Discover Rowlett.